Minute the part. All right. Um, relax here. Just lay back. Take some deep breaths. Mm, no, no, no. Forward, no. forward. You got it. Forward. Okay. I'll call Hal and I'll have him meet us at the airport. Okay. Oh, Hal's in Chicago. He's at that meeting for his promotion. That's right. Okay. I'll call Emily and have her mom set up something. No. Today. Call Kim and get Bob. Oh, Bob's in doubt. Don't worry. I'll call her anyway, and, and uh, she'll know how to reach him. And... Is there a problem? Please just stay with my mom. She's in labor. I, I'm going to set something up for the airport. Oh, you don't need to. The pilot. Stay calm. We're going to get you there. Don't worry. Oh, Mom. Dinner was great. Mm, great. Thank you very much. I'm just glad we got to spend some time together, you know? Me too, me too, sweetheart. I really love your company. However, I should make it clear that I can get through an evening alone. I know that. <laughs> I mean, it's possible that what I need is some time alone. Oh, well, oh, I... No, wait a minute. I didn't mean it that way. I love you. I love you, love you, love you for wanting to help more than I can say. But, you know, the last thing in the world that I want you to do is to put your life on hold on my account. Well, you put your life on hold for me last winter. I owe you one. Oh, well, come on. That's different, you little character. I'm the mama. Well, I didn't just come here to see you anyway. I didn't. I came here to see Sabrina and Franny, too. Mm. Sorry that Sabrina ran away so quickly after dinner. Mm, where'd she go? I'm at the vaguest idea. I really want her to feel like part of the family, but she's a very private person. Yeah, I'll say. I just hope that what's happened here doesn't make it hard on her. Me too, kiddo. Well, our little Christopher fell asleep the minute Horton heard a who. Oh, well, Horton <laughs> and his who. I'll bet I know that book backwards and forwards. Yeah, yeah that so you many do. Times. So what are your plans tonight, Missy? Well, I figured since my darling little brother's here to keep you company, I would just go out for a bit. Oh, really? Well, well who's the lucky guy? Who are you taking out, Franny? Is it, are you taking pity on Larry? Again? No, Smarty. Well, come on. Who is it? This is me you're talking to. Somebody you else? Shut up, Andy. What? Just shut up. Hey, you guys. You do not have to walk on eggshells around me. There's been enough of that in this house already. Now, my darling, I assume you're going to go check on your dad. Yes, Mom, I am. Good. Um, I just, I called him at the hospital tonight, and I just, um, well, I wanted to make sure at least he had dinner, you know? I'm glad you're going to do that. I worry about him, too. All right. I won't be late, I promise. Night, honey. Night. Hello. Paul! Wait, wait, what's wrong? Wait, 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 your mom's what? Oh, man. So listen, I gotta go to the capital, so I won't be here when you get home. Well, how long are you gonna be away for? Well, I hope to commute once the trial gets underway, but I have a few early meetings before court convenes. So anyway, I'm glad Lila's spending the night. Yeah, me too. Any idea when I'll be called as a witness? Well, that's hard to say. Jury selection could take some time, so you just be careful in the meantime. Well, with the FBI dog in my steps, what could happen? Yeah, considering you managed to shake them just the other morning, uh, I know how you like to tool around a rosy. Be careful. Yeah, but Mr. Hughes... No buts. Is... Listen, Lombard plays for keeps. The fire in Kankakee proves it. I mean it. Be careful. Mom, Jason Benedict's on the phone for you. Uh, I'll take it up there. Oh, good luck. So, ready to go with me? Oh, Duke, after what my father said, I don't think it would be a very good idea to drive to the country tonight. Oh, come on, what are you having second thoughts about spending the night with me? No, I'm not. Okay. That's what I wanted to hear. Besides, Lynn, this place is so remote that even if Lombard were after me, there's no way in a million years he'd find it. Piece of cake. Mr. Lombard's got nothing to worry about. Kramer Kid's one witness. He ain't ever gonna have to worry about taking the stand against him. Now listen, I want you to get the stewardess, and I want her to arrange for uh, a wheelchair to take your mother off the plane. I'm calling Bob right now. Stay cool. Man, I would hate to be in Paul's shoes right now. Well, Paul's gonna be just fine. Barbara's the one who's in trouble. I just hope Bob is still at the hospital. Uh-uh. This is Kim Hughes calling. It's an emergency. Would you page Dr. Hughes, please? Okay, listen, once Bob comes on the phone, I want you to give him this flight number and tell him that Barb's contractions are four minutes apart. I'm going to change my clothes so I can get to the hospital. I'll come, I'll come with you. Then somebody's got to stay with Christopher. Bob, hi, it's Andy. We've got an emergency here. Is it your mother? No, 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 it's not Mom. It's Barbara. 
Paul just called from, from the commuter flight, and Barbara's gone into labor. The contractions are four minutes apart. What time is the flight due in? In about 15 minutes, flight 418. Okay, I'll take care of everything. Tell your mother not to worry. Yeah, she's already on. Andy, I gotta hang up. I gotta use this phone. This is Dr. Hughes. I'd like an ambulance sent to the airport, Stat. The patient's name is uh, Mrs. Barbara Munson. She's aboard a flight from Chicago, commuter. It's uh, flight 418, and she's in labor. I want you to contact her physician, uh, Dr. Audrey Samuels, and see if Dr. Gunther is in the building. If he isn't, have him beeped. I want him to go along with the ambulance. I'm on my way down. Daddy, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do with you. It's after 10 o'clock. Did you just come from you're... home? Yes. What's wrong? Paul called from a commuter flight. He's with Barbara. She's in labor. I got to go, kid. Three minutes apart now. Oh, God, please. Only nine minutes till we land. Hang in there. Oh, it's been the longest nine minutes of my life. And mine. <sighs> Good evening, Mr. Reyes. Uh, right this way, please. Your special table is waiting. Would you like your champagne right away, Mr. Reyes? Yes, please, Leo. And uh, I think a bottle from my private stock. Of course. I think Leo agrees with me that a woman as lovely as you deserves only the best. Well, I'm very impressed. You seem to know all your employees by name. Well, I think it's part of being a good employer. And I think it's admirable that you can manage so many different businesses with that same personal connection. Just the way I do things. I never really thought about it. Well, you're too modest. You've accomplished a great deal. You said you've only been in Oakdale for four years, and yet you own this hotel and, and your consulting firm and the riverfront development? Yes, well, I am pleased with what I've managed to do, despite uh, the obstacles I've had to face. I'm afraid uh, there are still many people here who resent me as an outsider. Well, I'm sure that that will change with time. You think so? I'm certain of it. Well, we'll see. So, we've just finished my first sitting for the portrait. What do you think? Will I be an interesting subject? Oh, you certainly will. I just hope that I can capture your compassion, as well as the pride that you convey, especially in your eyes. They're very expressive. Well, I have every faith in your talent. Well, I don't know why. I haven't done very many portraits, and. You haven't asked to see any of my recent work. My style has changed quite a bit. I hope that it's more sophisticated than it was, which would suit you. Yes, I'd like to think a sophisticated approach would have suited me. But uh, I must say I really do admire your prior work, although you may have to alter that mural to take in my new development. Oh, yes, tell me about that. I'd, I'd love to hear. Well, it's going to have a lot of space for shops, boutiques, theaters. The centerpiece is going to be a magnificent skyscraper with an international convention center around it on the bottom and a penthouse with sweeping terraces all the way around for a magnificent view. That will be my office. Oh, that sounds marvelous. You seem to favor penthouses. Your apartment has a wonderful view. Yes, I'd like to be able to look out, think about the challenges that lie ahead. And I hope that you'll also see what you've accomplished. Well, yes, of course, there'll be time for that, too. I think that's healthy, to see where you've come from and where you're going. It can bolster your confidence. Sabrina, was your confidence a bit shaken after your experience with Colin? It wasn't long after my marriage that I realized that he was more interested in my inheritance than in me. What was most painful was learning that he'd been unfaithful. It can be terribly crippling to one's ego. Well, believe me, I know how that feels. Both Sierra and Meg betrayed me with other men. Why can't people simply be honest with one another? I've asked myself that question many times.
Thank you for your... Well, to honesty. To honesty. Perhaps I should let my family know I'm here. Have you told them yet that you're doing my portrait? Actually, I really haven't had the chance. Things have been rather hectic. For one thing, Fanny just got back from Chicago where she was raising money for the Earl Mitchell Center. Yes, they do very good work. I just made a donation. I suppose you've heard all about Shannon McKechnie's death. It's awful. Fanny said she and Duncan were really in love. With so few good marriages, why did such a tragedy have to happen to them? Well, I have no answer to that question. But enough of unpleasant thoughts. Tonight we start what I hope will be a long and rewarding relationship. Well, when I stopped by, I certainly didn't intend on staying for dinner. I was going to take you out somewhere with me. Well, thank you, Emily. I appreciate that. Thank but as you can see, Jessica was determined to cook. <laughs> I didn't know you were such a whiz in the kitchen. Well, nothing like pounding a few veal cutlets to work out a day's frustration on the Lombard case. I would imagine so. Hey, you know what? Let me clean up at least. No, everything's in the dishwasher. Shannon's kitchen is... Oh. No need to avoid her name. She's in my every waking thought and in my dreams at night. And I'm very happy to be with two people that knew and loved my Shannon. Well, I'll be right back. Well, Jessica's off to the Capitol tomorrow. Lombard's trial starts. Yes, I know. I'm testifying. Ah, that'll bring back some memories. Mm. Well, I'll be glad to see Connie and Marjorie. I do not want to see Philip. Aye, ah, the bloody murderer. Him and Tony Reyes, who ought to be in jail right now for his part in Shannon's death. Duncan, I want to see Tony pay for everything he's done, just as much as anyone else. But are you sure he had something to do with Shannon's murder? I'm sure. And I'm just as sure that every penny of his financial empire came directly out of Stenbeck's pockets, and I'm going to stop him. Duncan, will you let the police handle it, please? I appreciate your concern, Emily, but don't worry about me. Now, I have something I want to tell you. Yeah? Soon, everything that happened with Brock will be passed. And you'll have what Shannon and I had, with some very special young man that I know you're going to find. Well, I think I might have already found him. Paul. Is it that obvious? Well, it's been obvious for quite some time that he's had a great deal of feeling for you, and I know there's a special bond between you. Do you disapprove? Disapprove of love? Never. How could anyone? Well, Barbara certainly had a stab at it. Emily, if it's Paul that you really love, you won't let anything or anyone stand between you. If you think Paul is the one that's going to make you happy for the rest of your life, don't waste one damn minute worrying about what anybody else thinks. Oh, Duncan, how do you know if anything's for the rest of your life? I'd like to know the answer to that one. <laughs> well, it sort of sneaks up on you. You, if you're like me, at, at the start, you have doubts and fears, and you, you're not sure you want to commit to all that love demands. But then one fine day, you wake up and you find that your love is stronger than the doubts you've been battling, and your choice is clear. I guess I never got to that point. When Blake asked me to marry him, it was an incredible high and, and, and really exciting, but deep down, I knew there were doubts. Well, then he was the wrong man for you. It's as simple as that. I agree with Duncan. You know, Jess, if Blake was the right guy, he wouldn't have let his ambitions come between you. Although I do feel sorry for Blake. Even after everything he did to us at m and I just feel like maybe he's another one of Tonio's victims. That's right, Emily. But believe me, I didn't take it lying down. The choice is out. Um, look, look, we can stay here and watch Chris for you. Okay? Well, I, yeah, if sure. If you have plans, I mean, I can stay. No, 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 no problem. Are you okay? sure? Yeah. Thanks a lot. Yeah, you should be with Paul at this moment anyway. All right, so. I owe you one. Okay. Andy, will you get my car out of the garage and bring it around the front? Yep. Oh, Mom, I can't. Oh, God. Honey, um, 
sorry. I guess I just wasn't thinking clearly. Um, oh, I gotta call Emily. She'd want to be there. Oh, look, Mrs. Hughes, you know, uh, Rosie's out front. You can take my van. She's all gassed up and everything. Well, this is a pleasant surprise. It was very spur of the moment. My new employer sent me to Chicago on business. Turned out I had to stay over, so I thought I'd drive down here and bring you up to date. And uh, I am very glad to see you here. It's a bonus that I never expected. You're looking well. You're looking more beautiful than ever. Listen, whenever you want to, we can step into my office and have a little talk. Right. There's uh, something that I did want to say to Emily, though, first. Oh. I think I have a pretty clear idea of how you feel about me. I know that I let everyone down over at M&A. No, Blake, it was more than that. You deliberately betrayed us. I know. But I hope I've learned something from my mistakes. I've certainly paid a lot for them. I know that saying I'm sorry really doesn't cut it, but uh, someday... I... I don't know why you're saying this to me. You really should be saying it to Lily and Sean. Unfortunately, I won't be here long enough, but I hope you tell them what I said, and uh, please tell them that I intend to make it up to them. All right. I gather that Sean's doing all right in Zurich. Now, how do you know about that? Well, the firm I'm working for right now is contacts in Switzerland, so... Duncan, how about the meeting? Right. Excuse us. It's I hope right. you're going to be here when we finish. I, I know you have the Lombard trial starting tomorrow. Uh, you intend on driving down to the Capitol? You really are keeping up on things here. Well, I don't want to push it, but... If you could stay around a little while, give me a few minutes, I'd be very grateful. Boy, that was weird, him walking in here like that. It must have been tough for you to see him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I'm glad he did. Um... <laughs> I wonder what it would be like to see him again. But, um, I don't know. The disillusionment is still there, and the pain isn't completely gone. But I, I did learn a lot about myself. And, uh, I know I made some, well, not the best choices, but I also know why I made them. You had a lot going for you. Uh -huh. And you're a good cook to boot. <laughs> you know, Jess, what Duncan says is right. There is someone out there for both of us. Uh, I'll get that. <clears throat> McKechnie resident. No, this is Jessica. Oh. Yeah, sure. Hold on a sec. It's for you, Andy. Hey. Yeah. Oh. Hi, Andy. What's up? Is Barbara all right? All right. I'll be right there. Bye bye. The ambulance should be here in a few minutes. Yeah, I just hope Barbara makes it off the plane okay. Listen, why don't I call the dispatcher and see how things are going? Okay, then. Any Hi. news? Hi. Well, news. Uh, Dad's checking right now. I thought you'd be on your way to the Capitol by now. Well, I was on my way out the door when Leanne called. Does Hal know about this? I called in his hotel in Chicago and left a message for him. He wasn't there. He's just going to kick himself if he's late for this. Hoy, boy. She got off the plane in a wheelchair. Oh, oh great. That's good. Here she this is. is probably good. Hi, Paul. Hey, Paul. Hello, kid. Oh, Bob, oh, I'm so glad to see you. Has anyone spoken to Hal? Yeah, I left a message in the water hotel. Oh, get Hal here. I need Hal. I want to go with her. Wait, wait, oh, a minute. wait a minute. Why don't you go up to the solarium and I'll keep... No, Dr. Bob, I promised how I'd be with her. I have to yeah, go. Paul, Paul she's, she's going to be all right. As the world turns. Thanks for letting us know, bro. I'm glad she made it. Hey, let us know when the baby's born, okay? Oh, no, no, no. I understand your mom not wanting to take Rosie. I'm and figure out. I'm sure her... Mercedes is a lot more comfortable than my van. <laughs> Later. Oh.
I'm really glad that Barbara made it to the hospital and everything's all right. <laughs> you know, uh, by the time someone comes here to relieve us, uh, we're not going to be able to make our escape to the country. Oh, I know, I know. Look, I've been thinking, you know, sneaking away when my father's out of town, it, it just doesn't feel right, you know. I, I, I feel like we're taking advantage of the situation. I thought you would call Margot if you wanted to. Well, I'd rather be up front with him right from the start. Well, well, Leanne, you know, this is something that's private. I mean, our spending time like this, it's... Well, you, you're telling everyone about it and have the whole family cast a vote? Oh, that's not what I meant. <sighs> you know, this reminds me of a story that Margot told me. Oh, yeah? Uh, uh -huh. I have a feeling I'm not going to like this. You're going to like it. You know, Margot used to date this guy in high school, okay? Mm -hmm. His name was Harry. Handsome Harry. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. Is that the guy we met? The guy at Memorial with his wife? Uh-huh. Well, anyway, Handsome Harry would take Margot home after their date, and um, Lila would always, like, check on them because they'd be on the porch, and, you know. Well, one day, Lila decided that she wasn't going to do that. And all of a sudden, Margot realized that it was her responsibility to, you know, decide how far they should go. And, um, well, she decided that she wasn't ready to go any further. So you changed your mind, huh? No, 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 no. That, that, that. What I'm trying to say here is that we have to be responsible for our own actions. And this is a perfect example. Okay, Lila trusted Margot, okay? And I feel my father trusts us to be responsible, Duke. Okay, now, he told you point blank that you were in danger. And we just can't ignore that. And sneaking away, you know, from this FBI agent, it's... Well, he's here to protect you, Duke. I hate it when you're right. I just want you so much. Oh, well, I want you too. <laughs> you know, maybe after you testify, and, and we have like, all this behind us, yeah, yeah, right. Mm. Mm. Are you mad? No. Um, you know, only after Barbara, you know, she has her baby and someone you was know, here to look after Chris. Uh, we'll do the responsible thing. I'll just drive you straight home. Yeah. Mm. Well, you know, um, we have all this, this whole house to ourselves right now. You're right again. That's why we're wasting time talking. Mm. Mm. I can understand why you're so concerned about your friend, Mrs. Munson. Well, Barbara's like family. You know, I can't figure out why she would risk flying this late in her pregnancy. Well, she's a fashion designer and she had a big show in New York. It's Barbara Ryan Originals. Do you know it? Not offhand, but I'm sure my wife does. Carolyn loves clothes. Mm -hmm. So how's your wife doing? Well, she's settling in. Dr. Kozak's with her right now. So, uh, you know, I really wasn't expecting company tonight. I appreciate this. Well, good, good. I, I, by all rights, should be on my way to the Capitol right now. Yeah, Tom's heading up a federal prosecuting team. The Lombard kid? Uh, one and the same. I'm going to try him for federal racketeering charges, and then I'm going to bring him back here to Oakdale and try him for the murder of his own son. Uh, good luck. Thanks. Honey, shouldn't you be taken off now? Well, yeah, but no, I'm going to wait. I, I'd like to be here when the baby's born. Is Mr. Munson here? Uh, he's on his way from Chicago. I hope he gets here. Must be hard on her going through this without him. She's not alone. That's her son, Paul, over there. Oh, come on, man. Wearing out the carpet's not gonna help your mom. I just feel as helpless as I did on the plane. Look, just be nice. Because Bob's gonna walk in here and tell you you got a baby brother or a baby sister. Paul. Oh. Hi, Andy. I came as soon as I heard. Am I glad you're here? Hi, Andy. Oh, hi, Frank. Wait, where did Mom disappear to? Uh, she's in the yard. ER. Okay, I'm gonna keep her company. Tell him to sit down. Hey. Sit down, would you? Sit down. <laughs> hi, guys. Hi. hi. Franny, hi. This is Tom's sister, Franny. This is Daryl. We went to high school together in Iowa. Hello. Hi. Nice to meet you. you too. Didn't I see you up here earlier? Yes, you did. Yeah, I thought so. Well, I'm going to go check on my wife. You know, I'd love for you to meet her later, Mara. Sure, I'd love that if she's up to it. Great. I'll let you know. It's nice to meet you. You too. So, why is his wife here? Oh, she had a really terrible skiing accident several months ago. She's partially paralyzed. Oh, my God, that's terrible. You went to high school with him, you said? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, he saw... He's an old flame, the one that got away. Well, he's now chairman of the board of DeWitt Grains and Cereal. If only I'd known. 
By the way, have you guys seen Dad around? Uh, he's waiting outside delivery. How's Kim? She's in ER. I have a feeling she's trying to avoid Dad. Yeah, I have a feeling you're right. Hot tea? No, no sugar? Oh, my dear. You like it, right? Yeah. Why are you not upstairs with Paul? Uh, he's fine. He's with Emily. Wow. How come you're not upstairs with everyone in the solarium? Oh, I don't know. It just seems so awkward. The separation is so new. <laughs> Does that mean you think you're going to get used to it in time? Because I hope you don't. Mom, I know you've been hurt. I know how you feel, believe me. But Bob never stopped loving you. Son, it's really not quite so simple. I want my husband back. Still tied to Susan in some way, and until he deals with his feelings for her, I mean, how can we ever make our life work together? Oh, I was wondering where you were. I'll go have a call out for him. Good. All righty, I'm going to go see Paul. Uh, do you want to come with me? Uh, Andy, I'd like to have a word along with your mother. Okay. All right, I'll see you later. I, uh, I don't want to make things any more difficult than they already are, but... You avoiding me, I mean... It makes it tough on everybody. It just seems so awkward, no matter what we do. When we agreed to this trial separation, we said we wouldn't do anything that would make the family take sides. But if we're avoiding each other, that's exactly what's going to happen. And what's it going to be like around the holidays or when I come by and see Christopher? This is a family situation. And we should be with the family. You're right. Let's go upstairs together. took so long. Where's Emily? Uh, Memorial. Andy called. Barbara's in labor. Ha. I'm glad. Well, Hal and Barbara have been wanting that for a long time. Mm -hmm. Shannon would be thrilled. I uh, wanted to thank you for handling the sublet on my apartment. You're welcome. I was very surprised to hear that Bob Hughes had taken it. I was the last couple, but I would have expected to break up. Well, it's not a legal separation. They just needed some time apart to work a few things out. Hmm. I remember their 4th of July celebration. You told me that you'd hope to have a marriage just like theirs someday. Yeah, I still do. I wish that I could have been the one to give you that. Say, uh, you think you have time for a nightcap? Uh, well... Actually, I've, I'm going to be meeting Jason Benedict in an hour. We're driving up to the Capitol. Well, where are you meeting him? Uh, at his hotel. Well, why don't I drive you? W well, um... Don't worry about me, Jessica. I'll be fine. You two should talk. Well, I'll call you from the Capitol. Make sure you're all right. You just make sure you put Lombard away for good. I will, but I will worry about you, too. Thanks for everything. Listen, um... Shannon loved life more than anybody I ever knew. And she wouldn't waste a minute of it. I could kill you with my bare hands right now, Reyes. But I've no intention of rotting in prison for your miserable death. I'm going to track you down like an animal. I'm going to learn all your secrets and then I'm going to the police. And once your guilt is proven, I'll find you no matter where you hide, and I'll save the state the cost of an execution. 
Mr. Reyes? I wanted to let you know that I'm leaving for the night. Leo will get your coats whenever you're ready. Uh, Lana, I'm going to be meeting with the night manager a little later. If you could stay, it's uh, clear to me that a woman as intelligent and attractive as you are should not be spending her life in the check room. Well, I'll stay then. Good. Everything all right with your family? The line was busy. Huh. Perhaps I should be going. Oh, no, please, at least finish your champagne. All right. Good. Mr. Reyes, could I talk with you for a minute? Well, could you call my secretary in the morning? I was just wondering if you'd heard any word from Julie. No. And I don't expect to. Well, Caleb's sister Ellie saw in New York. And? And, well, you've got contacts there. How about calling up some of the modeling agencies? See if Julie's been trying to get work. Look, I already told the Snyders that I will do that. Well, thanks. The kids really miss seeing their mom. Is there something else? No, it's nothing important. It's just, when I was in your office, I noticed a Sunday supplement to the City Times. An advanced copy or something? Yes, what about it? Well, there was an ad in it for something I'd kind of like to get my kids. Anyway, I was just wondering if there's any chance I could take another look at it. It's the November 4th issue. You can pick it up on Sunday. Right. I just may not be in the area then. Well, thank you. I'm sorry. No, it's, it's good of you to help the Snyders find Julie. Well, my heart goes out to poor Caleb. We both know how it feels to be hurt by someone you love. But we were going to have only happy thoughts. So here's to a healthy relationship with no disappointments and most of all, no regrets. For a visitor? Yes, of course. Come on in. Okay. Margot, I'd like you to meet my wife, Karen. Hi. It's a pleasure to meet you. It's very nice to meet you. Please, sit down. Oh. Thanks. Daryl tells me that you have a friend in the hospital who's about to have a baby. Yeah, in fact, the father is my partner on the police force. Oh, that's terrific. It's a very happy reason to be in the hospital. It sure is. And Daryl tells me that you're seeing Dr. Kozak? Yes, I like him very much. Well, you should. He's one of the best. In fact, he just helps someone I know to avoid surgery and a serious back injury. Actually, we're hoping that he'll suggest surgery. None of the specialists we've seen have been very optimistic about reversing Carolyn's condition. We've seen just a few. Switzerland, London, Paris. <laughs> Practically well, a world tour. Well, uh, I hope little old Oakdale provides the good news you want. Thank you. Really, you know, I don't know if Harry told you... you there know, she goes just, again. Yeah, this is so... I'm sorry, it's just... I knew him as Harry back in Iowa. Yes, he told me. Well, anyway, what I was going to say is my mother is a nurse here and my father's the chief of staff, so if you need anything, I've got Paul. <laughs> Thank you very much. Everyone here has been very kind. Well, good. I'm glad. Listen, I'm going to leave you two alone now. Well, good night, Margo. Thank you for coming by, and, and I hope we get to know each other better as long as I'm here. I hope so, too. Good night. Hello. Good night. Bye-bye. Well. She's very nice. Yeah, Margo? Mm -hmm. One of the very best. Just how serious were you two back in high school? Oh. Harry was quite serious, but her mother was very protective. <laughs> like I've always told you, I never really knew what serious was until I fell in love with you. Well, it was nice to see you and Kim walking in here together. Lucky still feels very awkward about the situation. She was hiding down in the ER. Right. Here you go, Daddy. Thanks, sweetheart. Would you like some time? Uh, thanks, I don't. No. Okay. okay. Oh, what'd you think of Handsome Harry's wife? Well, you know, I don't know exactly what I expected a DeWitt heiress to be like, but she is very nice and she's very beautiful. How is her paralysis? Well, it's pretty serious. Apparently, they've been to doctors all over the globe. Well, if anyone can help her, Kozak can. Yeah. Listen, Handsome Tommy, um, shouldn't you be taken off about now? <laughs> Miss the big event? Listen, I'll call you. I'll tell you if it's a boy or a girl, but I'm going to worry about you if you're out on the road too yeah, late. Yeah, me too. I, that makes... I, really? 
Fine, I'm outnumbered. Uh, great, I'll walk you out. <laughs> okay, let me say goodbye from folks first. Paul, do me a favor. Tell your mom I waited as long as I could. I have to take a road. Thanks for coming back. Sure yeah. thing. I'll talk to you later. I hope when I get back, maybe you and Dad have made some progress. I know, I know. Margot and I worked our way through that thing with Hal, and here we are substituting for him, so you and Dad are going to work your way through this. You know something? The difference is, eventually, Margot was honest with you about her feelings for Hal. And when it comes to your father and Susan, I'm afraid he isn't being honest, even with himself. Dr. Gunther, what's happening? How's my mom? little girl you have there, Mrs. Munson. You should be very happy. Oh, I am. I'm very happy. Thank you so much for all your help, Doctor. Well, you and Mother Nature did most of the work. Well, I have to admit I was a little concerned when I found out that Dr. Samuels was not around, but you were really wonderful. Thank you. Good. I hope you realize I had to go through Audrey's records. I assume they'll remain confidential? Of course. Now, you've got quite a crowd waiting outside. You've seen your son. Who would you like to see next? Okay, my Bob Hughes. Coming right up. I'll see you in the morning. Get some rest. Oh. I promise you such a wonderful life. <laughs> Hi. Oh, look at that precious little bunny. Oh, what a darling little girl. Oh, it reminds me of the first time I held Christopher. Oh, golly. Now, Hal and I decided that if it was a little girl, we were going to name her after our mothers. So I'd like you to meet Jennifer Louise Munson. I've got to take it slow, because I've just got my foot in the door, and I don't want to arouse suspicions. But so far, Terrell seems to trust me. I've already learned where he keeps his personal records, all that stuff, ledgers, disks, it's all under lock and key. But one way or another, I'll get a look at it. And when I do, I'm sure we'll have the proof we need. That Terrell is tied to Tonio, and both of them to Stenbeck's Swiss accounts. You're going to pay, Reyes. You're bloody well going to pay. Look at me. Kruger, are you in Oakdale? I, no, listen, I don't want to talk about Shannon. The only thing that keeps me going is knowing I'm going to even the score with Reyes. How did you find that out? I was just talking with someone that works in Terrell's office. Oh, uh, all right. Of course I can meet you there. Well, this is the best news I've had since, uh... Never, never mind. Uh, I'm on my way. I'm sorry about running into Tony. Oh, it's okay. Just reminds me why I'm in Toronto working for Terrell. You know, if Duncan's right, you really could be in danger. Well, believe me, I'm playing my cards very close to the vest. Terrell hasn't got a clue who I am or what I'm after. Blake, I didn't realize you were in town. Uh, just visiting. I'm working in San Francisco now. Well, I'm glad things worked out. Who's she? Oh, that's uh, Sabrina Hughes, Kim and Bob's daughter. She's with Tony? Somebody ought to straighten her out. Oh, I don't think you have to worry about that, knowing how her family feels about our Mr. Reyes. Listen, I uh, really don't want to spend this evening talking about Tony. Yeah, Stan. It's me. The, uh, accident's been arranged. Once the Kramer kid starts his van, Mr. Lombard will have nothing to worry about. 
Sure yeah. glad Franny told us the good news, huh? Oh, yeah. Paul must be so happy. Yeah. Little sister. <laughs> Last chance. Sure you don't want to drive to the country with me? Positive. Come here. Mm. Listen, when we make love for the first time, I want it to be perfect. Yeah, yeah, well, me too. I don't want it to be more than that. Mm. Uh, I think we better get going or I'm never going to get you home. Okay, Rosie. Let's go. Watch Joker's Wild weekdays at 4 on TV6. You're a doll. I'll make it up to you, I promise. Bye. Who's the doll? And who are you going to make it up to? Jealous? No, no, just a little suspicious. Uh-huh. I bet you're jealous. I want you to be. Hey. You know how I feel about jealousy. Forget it. All that happened was I reached Lily out the farm and I asked her if we could take off early for Paris. What'd you say? She said sure, that I deserved it last night after what I went through with my mom. Yeah, well, everything turned out great. You got a new little tiny baby sister. Beautiful. And at least I can take you on this birthday trip with a clear conscience. Hmm. Just remember what I said about jealousy, okay? Don't make a big deal of it. The only time I was ever jealous was with that Frank Wendell creep when he kept showing up at the office drooling over you. With any luck, that guy's left town by now. You know, you didn't let me take my shower before, so can I? Please? You weren't complaining either. I didn't complain. No, you didn't. <laughs> and you know what? If we take separate showers, we'll be late for work. Lily will be really mad, so I think we should just shower together. Well, yeah, that should speed it up. <laughs> Uh, is Emily Stewart there? Who's calling, please? Frank Wendell. See you later, sweetie. Bye-bye. Mm, <laughs> poor Hal looked a little glazed when he left here. Well, poor Hal slept that whole night in that chair right oh, there. No. <laughs> he was a little tired from the drive from Chicago. <gasps> Farb, I was kind of surprised to see Franco Visconti here. Well, I was too. I mean, I told him not to come, but... He insisted that we'd have time to work on the new line before the baby came, and then when he called the factory, they, they told him I was here, so he came by to congratulate me. And obviously, Gavin Kruger did the same thing and um, sent his calling card. So I hope you're pleased that Hal and I named our baby girl after our mom. Of course I am. I think that's great. <laughs> Hal and I decided on the baby's name a long time ago, but when I told Kim and Bob last night, I'm afraid it brought up a lot of bad memories for them. Lord knows the last thing I wanted to do was give him something else to deal with right now. I'm not talking about just the five years of our marriage, Bob. I'm talking about all of the years it took to build that love and trust between us. That's what you betrayed the night you took Susan to bed. Good morning, Mother. Good morning, darling. Oh, how was breakfast with Seth? It was fast, actually. Oh. He wanted to get back to the farm. Mommy, I know this is a really difficult time for you. And I wish with all my heart I could help. Oh, but honey, you are helping just by being here. Now, listen, what are you planning for the rest of the day? What are you going to do? Well, as Seth didn't have time to go to the hospital, I thought I'd go see Barbara and the new baby. Ah. Would you like to come? Oh, I love it. I love it. In fact, I was just making a list of things I have to do. I want to get a present for baby Jennifer, and then I have to get something for Mac and your grandmother for their anniversary. So I was hoping maybe you'd help me choose, okay? Be fun to have something positive to focus on. I think that's a splendid idea. Good. Oh, golly. You know, I couldn't help but think last night when I was... Uh, watching Barbara hold her little girl for the first time. About how I was robbed of those wonderful moments when you were first born. And on all the years of growing up. We will make up for that. 
and I do love you. Oh, honey, I love you, too. Kim, Sabrina, have either of you seen Duke this morning? He was supposed to come to my house an hour ago, and he never showed up. Uh, well, no, but I, I heard him... He came in kind of late last night. Maybe he's still uh -huh. asleep. No, no, I went over there, and I knocked on the door, and, and there was no answer. Well, you could be in the shower. Why are you so upset? Yeah, but you should have seen Al's face when he met his little baby daughter for the first time. I swear to God, his legs turned jello before my very eyes, and he's still in a daze. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. well, I hope he doesn't blow this meeting in Chicago. He won't, Dan. He's one of your professionals. I'm feeling like a persona non grata. Well, that's great. You know, I have managed to make everybody I feel close to feel uncomfortable and awkward. For this boy who has to clean up the mess that he's made of his life, he is not ideal husband. <gasps> well, bonjour. Well, hello, Emily. Don't you look smart? Hi. Hi. Happy birthday. Oh, thank you, honey. Oh, it's your birthday suit. <laughs> so, Lucinda, I'm sure you heard about my mom's tremendous huge success. Yes, you, darling. Right? She kind of got it close with the baby. Yes, yes. Paul, you better go take care of business. You're going to be late for your jet. Yeah, you're, you're going right. on a business trip? Uh, no, it's strictly personal with a great boss like Billy. I'm able to take Emily to Paris for Shelby. a birthday. Oh, I'd be my few ladies. You, parents, Emily, wonderful. Did you get a note from his mom to slip into his passport? <gasps> I get it. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday! Thank you, Lucinda. Oh, she's so snarky, isn't she? Oh, please pay no attention to her. Yeah, I have to get used to the way people uh, react to us. Hey, forget about other people. Over someone who's taking me to Paris for the night. <laughs> so I'll be in the office if you need me, or okay. if you want to take me with you. <laughs> Happy birthday. Yes, all right. Uh, okay, Jane, so then tell Lucinda that I'll meet her at the hospital. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Okay, so I'm on my way back to the hospital. Will you call me? Let me know if you speak with Duke, all right? Of course I will. Okay. Take it easy now. Bye-bye. Whew, well, I feel a lot better than when I first got in here. <laughs> Good, I'm glad. Now, you don't you have classes to get to? Yes, yes, but it's in the afternoon. You know, I think I'm going to go by the hospital and see Barbara, check out the new baby. Good, you should. And if yeah. you're there around noon, why don't you uh, stop and have lunch with Daryl and me? Oh, no, I couldn't. I, I wouldn't want to intrude. You wouldn't be. Uh-huh. I just think it's really great that he's back in my life again. It's a nice surprise. Um, I don't think I'm going to tell Father that if he calls, you know, since this case is so important. I think you should leave now. Enough of it. Okay. Go on. Okay. Go home. Out of Get here. out of here. Bye. Bye. Hi, Fred. Oh, Margo, hi. I'm so glad you're still here. Hi, what's the matter? Look, I just stopped by to see Duncan, and his assistant Diane ended up showing me up to the loft because he didn't answer his buzzer. Anyway, once we got up there, I found this note that he had obviously written in a hurry before he left last night. What? Left for where? Well, I think he got some kind of lead from Gavin Kruger and went to follow up on it. Oh, great. There he goes, taking the law into his own hands again. When is this man going to learn? The fast food burger, quite tasty, but so much weighs against it. The fat, the cholesterol, the calories. Introducing new Light Balance Microwavable Meals. Mouth-watering dishes that are low in fat, low in cholesterol, averaging less than 195 calories. Resulting in a perfect balance between good taste and good nutrition. New Light Balance Meals from Lunch Bucket Brands. Now you can have your taste and eat right, too. Kellogg's Cracklin' Oat Bran. So crunchy, sweet, and irresistible, it's gotten you in trouble again. Is that the last of the Cracklin' Oat Bran? What should you do? Is that the last of the Cracklin' Oat Bran? Is that the last of the Cracklin' Oat Bran? With the crunchy, sweet taste of Kellogg's Cracklin' Oat Bran, an open box is an empty box. High school knows little kids love ride-on toys. Woo-hoo! Make way for the fire truck! So we built one that's extra special. It opens up into a Weevil's Fire Station playset. 
Now by the Weevil Fire Station early in the morning. Here in the Weevil Fire Station, busy toddlers will find a whole world of fire station fun. See the Weevil Firemen, they're going to save the town. Quick, get the ladder! Weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. The Weebles Fire Station ride on from high school. Weebles to the rescue! I've never seen such a perfect white rose. It's so fragrant, too. It's from Gavin Kruger. Oh, he's in town again? Um, actually, I don't have any idea. I'm sure he's far away in some exotic setting. Then how did he know about the baby? He must have spoken to someone at M&A. &A. She's beautiful, Barbara. It must be such a feeling of accomplishment. Oh, it is. Better than all the fashion awards in the world. I can imagine. I hope to know that feeling someday. Oh, you will. You will. So, Sabrina, have you met any nice, handsome, eligible men since you've been back in town? <laughs> Not really. But I have spent some time with Seth Snyder. Really? What about him and Betsy? He came by to take me to breakfast this morning, and he said that Betsy took Danny on a business trip to Florida, and she's planning to spend time with her grandfather in Atlanta. Yeah, Ellen's flying down there, too. In fact, Courtney's moving into the house with us while Ellen is going. Oh, boy, is there going to be a lot to handle on top of everything else? No, no, as a matter of fact, it really helps me to have the girls and Chris there at the house right now. I imagine it's a very lonely time for Bob. It is. Very. Hi. Hi. I don't usually hire out as a delivery boy, but since <laughs> I was Jennifer Louise's pediatrician, I wanted to give her mom a full report. Well, tell me, please, doctor, if you will, what were the results of the second APGAR test last night? Perfect 10. All right. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. Hey, Sabrina, have you started painting yet? As a matter of fact... all the nerve. What? It's from Tony Reyes. Sending congratulations and best wishes. How dare he after he was responsible for sending me to prison. Ellie, I think that that is a fantastic idea. Well, just go for it. Okay. No, I'm not sure when we're going to be back. You know, the time difference, we still haven't figured it out. <laughs> I will. All right. Au revoir. Sorry for the interruption. And really, thank you for the flowers. They're beautiful. It's the least I can do. You're doing me a big favor by going shopping with me. Oh, yeah, we better hurry up. I take it from that phone call you're heading off somewhere. I'm going to Europe. No kidding. Big business trip, huh? Hey, Emily. Hi. Hi. Margot, this is uh, Frank Wendell. Frank Wendell, this is uh, Detective Margot Hughes. Hi. What's up? Hi. Uh, sorry to barge in, but is Gavin Kruger in town? She, not that I know of. Let me ask Lily. Lily! Margot's here. She wants to know if Gavin Kruger's in town. Margot, hi. Hi. Hi, Frank. Hi, Lily. Hi, uh, not that I know. Why? Because Duncan has disappeared again and left a note made it sound as if Kruger were in Oakdale. Oh, well, Gavin is full of surprises, but I can't imagine him, him being here without, without contacting us. Okay, if he shows up, you let me know? Sure. Um, I hope Duncan isn't doing anything dangerous, is he? Well, me too. Well, have you heard from Tom? Yeah, I spoke to him briefly this morning and called about Duke, and they're starting jury selection. Okay. Well, next time you talk to him, tell him that we're all rooting for him. And we hope that he puts Philip Lombard behind bars where he belongs. There's a good chance of that happening. Bye, guys. Bye. Listen, Lily, I'm going to run for a little bit, okay? I'm helping Frank pick out a birthday present for his daughter, Jenny. Her birthday's the day after tomorrow. Mm. Mm. Have you heard anything else from Julie? Not since I heard Ellie spotted her in New York. Don't worry. I'm sure she'll call Jenny for her birthday. Okay, well, uh, would you tell her to call Caleb when she does? No problem. See you later. Bye. Lily, where was Emily going with that creep? Uh, they're going to go buy a birthday present for Jenny. I guess her birthday is in a couple days. No, it's not. I saw Jenny's birth certificate. She was born November 30th. Are you sure? I'm positive. So what is Frank really up to, and where does Emily fit in? Toffee over scrumptious popcorn and peanuts. So crunchy, so munchy, it's love at first bite. 
Ironing is easy with Norelco's Easy Steam Irons. Less effort goes in because more steam comes out. The secret? Norelco has a bigger steam chamber than the leading iron. So you get more penetrating steam to reach deep into every fabric. In addition, there's adjustable steam that matches the volume of steam to your fabric. The Easy Steam Irons from Norelco make ironing so easy they take the wrinkles out of ironing. Now, when wife turns up the heat... Sorry, Mr. O'Hare. There's degree antiperspirant. I just don't keep my patty waiting at the altar. Body heat activated degree is different. So, sir, patty says that we have a lot in common. Like what? Uh, is it hot in here? Every time your body heat rises, degree turns on extra protection. When life turns up the heat, degree has you covered. Fishing. I love fishing. Degree, your body heat yeah, turns it on. I can't believe it. Don't you ever quit? Oh, I've been away a long, long time. I mean, a really long time. And my roommate is still going strong. Meet his roommate. Renews it roommate air freshener with twice the freshening liquid. So it freshens air longer than magic mushroom. It's incredible. I can't believe how long my roommate is lasting. Long lasting roommate from Renews It, where fresh ideas are always in the air. Oh. Did you see her? She is so adorable. She oh, is so thank, thank you. <laughs> you know, I've got to tell you, you are a great part of my show success. You have a very nice career in design, Leanne. Oh, well, that's really nice to hear. But I'm seriously thinking about going into law. Really? Yeah. Well, let's please your father. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> well, hello, everybody. Hi. Hi. Oh, honey, those are beautiful. beautiful. What do you think? Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> um... Listen, I'm going to let you have your mom all to yourself, okay? Thanks. Bye -bye. I'll see you later. Bye. 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 Beautiful. Those are pretty. Well, you look a lot more relaxed than you did last night. Well, I can't imagine why. I will never forget how wonderful you were last night. Well, you didn't leave me very much of a choice now, did you? <laughs> so when do you guys get to go home? Oh, I think maybe late tomorrow, day after. Today's Emily's birthday, huh? Yeah. Have a celebration planned? Well, actually, that's why I came to see you now. I've got to get the ball rolling on that, oh. so... Ooh, those are pretty. Yeah, those must be from Hal. Thank you. Well, give Emily a big happy birthday from me. I will. And if I don't see you guys later, I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, honey. Bye, Mom. Bye. I think it's perfect. It isn't too, uh, too fancy. Oh, little girls love fancy dresses. Plus, you said her favorite color is red. Lady knows best. Wrap it up. Will it be cash or credit card? Ah, uh, cash. There you go. I, uh, wish Julie could be with Jenny on her birthday. You know, I hate to think of Julie in New York all alone. Well, I doubt she'd be alone too long. I'm sorry. I know you two are good friends. It really amazes me sometimes. I don't know why. You got so much class. Julie's a lot different. Hey! Emily, what are you doing here? I'm helping a friend get a birthday gift for his little girl. Oh. Dr. Stewart, this is my mother, Frank Wendell. Hi. Hi, good to meet you. Uh, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go look for something for Pete while I'm here. Okay. Is that the guy you told me about? Yeah. Excuse me. No happy birthday? What? Oh, happy birthday, <laughs> darling. <laughs> Many happy returns. I'm sorry. What are you doing here? I am looking for a baby present for Barbara. You've got to be kidding me. For Barbara? No, really. She's changed a lot these past few months. 
I just stopped by to see her, and she told me again that she doesn't blame me for what happened with Bob, and I think she really needs it. Mother, watch her back, okay? Yeah. You know, uh, Kim came into the uh, solarium today when I was talking to Bob, and... I don't know, she just looks like she's convinced that I'm going to take advantage of him while he's on his own. Oh, you're doing anything but that, Mom. Well, I wish somebody would tell her that. Oh, Frank, your package is there. Ooh. Isn't that pretty? You did a nice job. Always try to get the kid who's not having a birthday something, too. That way, his nose won't get bent out of joint. <laughs> well, I think that's a good way to handle it. There you go. Dr. Stewart, now that I've met you, I can see where Emily gets her incredible good looks. So, Uncle Bob, I'm not going to be able to check on my mom until tomorrow. Would you be able to keep an eye on her for me? Oh, sure, I'd be glad to. But listen, don't worry about her. She's in great shape. Good. Thanks. Okay, bye. Hey, Bob. I Go suppose on. the family's pretty excited about the new addition, huh? Well, it's uh, nice to have something to be happy hey, about. Hey, dear. Hi. Hi, Bob. Yeah, I wasn't expecting you until lunchtime. Well, I have to speak to Rex about something, and I was getting uh, feedback on Domingo's cuisine. Oh, so. yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. I had to pass through the cafeteria. Kim is there with Sabrina looking so sad, and now oh, yeah. it makes me think of those awful times when you and I were unhappy. The worst time of my oh, life. Oh, come because on. Of Susan. Let's not hash that over. That's ancient history. Done. Finish. Okay. Oh, no, boy. Our son. Well, he's okay. Okay. Hey, listen, uh, uh, don't don't uh, breathe a word of this to anybody, but they've got him under the witness protection program until he's done testifying. I really think that Lombard will hurt him. We're talking about a guy who killed his son, right? I guess they feel if he's backed into a corner, he'll stop at nothing. Hmm? I'll walk you over to Rex. We'll stop off with say hello to Barbara. Come on. Hmm. Well, I hope Duncan isn't putting himself in any danger. Well, me too, but I'm afraid that's exactly what he's doing. Excuse me. Hey, Mac. Oh, yeah. Hi, oh, Graham. Get out of here. Look, I'm glad I tracked you down. Listen, Duncan has gone off in some sort of undercover investigation again. I need your permission to concentrate on finding out what he's up to. Well, sure, I can go along with that. All right, great. Uh, it's going to be tomorrow night at about 7.30, so... Okay. Well, I will be there, Grant. <laughs> I wouldn't miss it, Mom. Uh, Bob... Hey, I thought you had a meeting with Duncan McKechnie. Well, I, I did. I just saw Sabrina and uh, Kim, and they'll be there, too. Where'd you see them? Not in a, a cafeteria. They'd been um, visiting Barbara. Oh. So, well, we'll see you tomorrow night. Okay, Mom. Dan, we must be going there. Yeah. All right, thanks okay. a lot. Oh, there. Hi. Hi. You ready for lunch? Um, n no, I can't, so I was just going to try and find you. I can't have lunch with you today. I've got some police business. Oh, what a drag. You know, I was really looking forward to that. Okay, how about a quick cup of coffee in the oh, cafeteria? You got it. All right. Okay, Daddy, we'll, we'll see you around. All right, then. All right. Oh, good morning. Hi. I heard you two were in the building. We were visiting Barbara and her beautiful new baby. Do you have a minute? Of course. Excuse me, I have a phone call to make. Okay. Is this about Mom and Mac's party? Uh, no, not really. You know, I suppose if there's any one thing that we've learned from our sessions with Matt, it's that we should be honest about our feelings. Really get them out. And that's what I would like to try to do. About a half an hour ago, I came in here looking for Branny, and I saw you and Susan over here talking. And I, uh, I don't know, I had that sinking feeling in the pit of my stomach. And like an idiot, I, I turned and, and left. I don't know what you thought you saw. But what it was, was me and another doctor in this hospital. Kim, I, I, uh, I can't avoid Susan, and I won't. Well, then I'm going to avoid you. Because I'm not going to put myself through this anymore. Heart disease is the nation's number one, number one killer. You make me feel so young. An estimated 60 million Americans have high serum cholesterol. You make me feel there are songs to be sung. Too much saturated fat. Saturated fat may be bad for your height. And every time I see you grin. Bad for your height. I am such a happy individual. For your heart. Even when I'm old and gray, I'm gonna feel the way I do today. Cause you make me feel so young. Thomas, get heart smart. Is it good? Not bad at all. Well, that's quite a compliment coming from you. Dinty Moore Beef Stew.
But you never liked my food. Oh, I like this, all right. It still has only 240 calories per 8-ounce serving. You really like it? Yep, just fine. How about another helping? Yep. But now it's available in a microwavable bowl. Where'd you plug that thing in? Tucson. <laughs> Getting out and enjoying yourself, that's what life is all about. And it's easy when you have the best bladder control protection. And Depend Elastic Leg Undergarments give you the best protection yet with Absorblock, a super absorbent system that locks in 25% more. They're the best protection and the best way for you to get back into life. Hey! <laughs> get back into life with Depend. With Absorblock protection. Hopefully this gig will be over real soon with a big bonus. I'll be back with you and the kids. Any word from Julie? Figures. Yeah, I love you too, babe. Bye. Stan, my man. You here with my big bonus for the accident? No. I'm here to tell you you messed up royally. Maybe the Kramer kid hasn't driven the van. The guy we have following the kid now saw two feds put him in one of their cars early this morning and take off. You blew it, Frankie. And the boss isn't going to like it Look, one hey, man, bit. You can't blame me. Shut up and listen. We're giving you one more chance. Kramer's real tight with Dr. John Dixon from Memorial. He probably knows where they took the kid, so get on it. Dixon might lead us to Connie, Marjorie, and Esther Marino. And we can take care of all the key witnesses in one clean sweep. Uh, is that from Gavin? Uh, yes, it is. Is he in town? You know, I don't have any idea. Wouldn't you know if he were? <laughs> you would think I would. Uh, Margo stopped by, and uh, from a note that Duncan left, it sounded like Gavin was here. If you hear from him before we do, would you ask him to call? I don't think I will, but if I do, yes, I will. Hi, you up for some visitors? Oh, hi. Hello. Hi, and I'm going to go out of here. Bye. Bye, John. Congratulations, Barbara. Yes. Congratulations. Yeah. You look absolutely radiant. Barbara, we've had so many misunderstandings. I wish we could just put them all behind us in the past. I saw Paul at the office. He's just... He's grown so in the past year. Yes, he has. I'm very proud of him. When I went into labor last night in a plane, he was so cool. He just kept everything under control. <laughs> now he's taking another plane <laughs> to Paris. He's taking Emily there for her birthday. That's very sweet, Paul. Well, now I want you to open the gift. <laughs> what are you up to? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, that's gorgeous, but it's too much. Mm -mm. You deserve the best, and I'm going to see that you get it. Oh, Paul. James, I don't need diamonds or emeralds. All I want is for you to love me as much as I love you. Hey, what's the matter? It's supposed to be a happy day. I'm just overwhelmed, that's all. Well, this is going to be your day with one big surprise after the other. And now that we're on our way to Paris, I'd like to show you how I really feel. Mrs. Hughes, I thought I'd take Chris to the park. Would you like to come with us? Oh, George, thanks, no. I uh, have some phone calls I have to make. You better take a sweater, though. It's kind of chilly out. Okay. Uh, did you want me to get that before I go? Please, thank you. Tim, I know you're paranoid about Susan, but I can't avoid her. You've got to stop reacting like it's an ongoing affair. It happened once. One, 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 one. Tim? And then you can throw me out bodily if you want to. Don't tempt me. If you want to save your marriage, you better listen to me. It's Lily Walsh. Lily, it's Barbara. Is Paul there? Barbara, no. Uh, uh, I gave Paul the rest of the day off. What about Emily? 
I gave her the day off, too. It's her birthday. It's her problem. Is there something I can do for you? Your mother told me that Paul was going to be taking Emily to Paris for her birthday. Is that true? Oh, I can't believe she told you that. Paul wanted to keep that a secret. Why would he tell your mother and not his? Oh, he probably didn't want you to worry while you were in the hospital. May I speak to her? Barbara, hold on. Ellie wants to talk to you. Barbara, hi. Just wanted to let you know everything's full steam ahead at the factory and the orders are pouring in. Well, that's good to hear. I'll try to stop by later and we can talk specifics. Yeah, well, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. It's me. The situation has reached emergency proportions. You have to arrange for that transfer for Emily Stewart as soon as possible. Yes, I got your flower and your lovely note, and if you meant what you said in that note, you'll take care of this right away. You know, you're the most fantastic woman I've ever known. Happy birthday. As the world turns. This portion brought to you today by... Crisco shortening. For light and flaky pie crusts, Crisco is the recipe for success. The secret to any great pie is a light and flaky Crisco crust. And this month, you can find out how easy it is to make. Just watch. less saturated fat than butter, Crisco is the recipe for success. Look in this month's Ladies Home Journal and these other magazines for your Crisco pie crust recipe. Got a cold? You gotta get relief with Alka-Seltzer Plus cold medicine. When you gotta get relief, you gotta get Alka-Seltzer Plus. There's the part of me that says I should be above being concerned about looking older. Then there's the real me. There's the part that says, who cares about a few little lines? Then there's the real me. Oil of Olay. So like the fluid in young skin, it penetrates in a flash to smooth, soften. There's the part that says, oh, just grow old gracefully. Then there's the real me that says, why? I don't mind you ignoring me at the hospital. Frankly, it's easier that way. But it hurts Bob. Like today in the solarium, I just ran into him. He asked me how I was. It was no big deal. And then you came in and looked at us like we were a couple of criminals. You spun around on your heel and you left. He didn't see you and I didn't tell he him. He knows. I told him before I left. Great. <laughs> I know you don't believe this, but I have been doing everything I can to avoid seeing him. You're right, I don't believe you. I don't know what else I can do. I've been trying to find a job. Uh, That's in supposed to town. make me feel better. Oh, at least you don't have to worry about us running into each Come other at the hospital. Right? Come off it. When Bob and I were in London, and we found out about your accident, 
I prayed with all my heart that it wouldn't keep you from taking that job in California. And I've come to realize since then that just putting some distance between the two of you isn't going to change his feelings for you. I don't understand you. I, I don't understand why you can't forgive him. I envy you. He's a, he's a wonderful man. You've got to be crazy to turn your back on a man like that. Don't you kid yourself. I have not turned my back on him. Okay. Then I want to tell you something. It's getting harder and harder for me to control my feelings when I see what you're putting him through. And if he ever comes to me and tells me that it's hopeless with you, I am going to do everything I can to get him to love me as much as I love him. Just like old times. Right, Susan? Yeah. Oh, that's okay. I have to see you, Rex. I'll be back later. Oh, great. Okay. I understand you were a big hit in New York. I'm glad we didn't lose you. Oh, thanks. <laughs> see you later. Okay. Bye. Hi. Uh, <laughs> very happy for you and Hal. Oh, thanks. Promise to bring her back soon, Mrs. Oh, Mason. Oh, Perry. We'll see you later, sweetie pie. Here you go. There you go. You have a little nap. Bye. <laughs> Hello? Gavin, any news on your plan to relocate Emily? Ah. Listen, um, Sean Baxter called a little while ago and Ellie was here. She got on the phone and he said something to her about you being headed back to Oakdale. Well, no one understands why you haven't contacted anyone from M&A. I understand, but no one else does. Which is why I think it's best for everyone concerned if you just left. Well, Jacques, I must say, without a doubt, this is the most beautiful city I've ever seen. Where are you from in the States? Uh, well, Chicago. It's uh, right outside of Chicago, actually, a little place called Oakdale. Mm. One of our special clients, Mr. Gavin Kruger, speaks very highly of it. Are you serious? You know Gavin? Bien sûr. This is how you Americans call a small world. <laughs> no? Yes. Enjoy your champagne. Thank you. Thanks. Unbelievable. Can't seem to get away from that guy, can we? Hey. I thought that your jealousy for Gavin Kruger is over and done with. Come on, don't you feel a little sorry for him? He's pretty heartbroken after what happened to Shannon. Right. Well, he's not too heartbroken to manage to find time to send my mom a white rose. I still think those guys knew each other before at Oakdale. Well, I think you're wrong. Then how did he know she was in the hospital? <sighs> Darling, he said that this was our night and we were not going to let anything spoil it, right? Right. Come on, this is the most romantic birthday any woman could ever ask for. Well, it's only because I love you so much. You know, you've made me happier than I ever thought I could be. Happy birthday. Uh, Sabrina, could you meet me here at my office instead of at the penthouse? I'm afraid I have to wait for an important phone call. Great. All right, goodbye. Anything else before I leave, Mr. Reyes? No, Sandra, I think that will be it. But I want to congratulate you on a terrific first day. Since you worked in Mr. Greer's law firm, I think you understand how important the confidentiality of my clients is. Yes, of course. Good. I had to let my last secretary go because she discussed my business dealings outside the office. Oh, you can count on my discretion. Anything else? Uh, were you able to reach Mr. Terrell? No, but I left several messages with his secretary. He was out on an emergency. He'll call you back. Well, then, that will be all. Thank you. I'll see you tomorrow. Damn it, Richard. Why don't you call? 
Keckney could be onto something with Kruger's help. Talking to yourself again, Tony? What are you doing here? I came here to talk about Sabrina Hughes. Give you a little warning. Sweetheart, we're not trying to intrude into your private life. You are an adult, and we respect that. But your father and I both know Tony O'Reilly very well. He has an unsavory reputation. He's being very honest with me about all that. He knows that some of it may be his own doing, and he sincerely wants to change. Besides, I'm only painting his portrait. I'm sorry that you were both so worried when you heard. We worry about all our children. We want you to be happy. I am. I know, I made a big mistake with Colin. But I'd like to think that I can trust my own judgment now. So... I should really go up and get ready, if it's all right. So I'm not late meeting Tony. I don't know what else we can do. Hmm. Lord, Tony Ramos. Oh. Well, anyway, it's uh, <laughs> it's kind of nice uh, us to be on the same side for a change. Actually, it's good not to be thinking about ourselves. Also, you want some coffee? I don't mean to impose. No. I thought maybe you'd like to spend some time with Chris while you're here. I'd like that very much. You never did tell me. Who told you about Sabrina Antonio? Susan. kitchen center appliance. When you add it all up, no single appliance makes more sense. The Oster Kitchen Center appliance. There is no. And now, Garfield mm. will demonstrate how every cat can get the nutritious proteins of mm. meat, fish, poultry, dairy products, and grain sources mm. in every meal. Mm -hmm. Simply take one serving of Alpo cat food and <laughs> stuff it. <laughs> This way to get rid of corns is dangerous. But Dr. Scholl's corn removers are clinically proven safe and effective. Within five applications, the painful corn will be replaced with new, softer skin. We guarantee it. Dr. Scholl's corn removers. Hard to believe, but that was me, Dan Deardorff, before I lost 40 pounds in four months with Ultra Slim Fast. Hey, I'm a big eater, but with Ultra Slim Fast, I never felt hungry. The plan is easy. I had a delicious shake for breakfast, another for lunch, and then a sensible dinner. I'm back to my college playing weight, and I feel terrific. Best of all, I'm not shaped like one of these anymore. Ultra Slim Fast. Give us a week. We'll take off the weight. Like father, like son, these two men are loved by one woman. Dad loves you a lot. I care for him deeply. You guys are almost a family. You and I were almost a family. That was then, and this is now. And now, she must decide. I mean, there's really only one choice. I will always love you. The Bold and the Beautiful Weekdays. All My Children, Susan Lucci has the men of Dallas wrapped around her finger. If you want me, you can have me. The women have other ideas. <laughs> Dallas premieres Friday. Stay tuned for Guiding Light, next on most of these CBS stations. On 530 Live, liquid diets, do they really work? We'll have a report. Plus, Health Team 6 will examine a condition that afflicts millions of Americans, chronic back pain. For details, join us at 530. by Lady Madonna.
join us tomorrow for As the World Turns. This is CBS.